Welcome. Good to see you all this morning. Welcome to Peace Lutheran Church. Whether you're a visitor for the first time or you've been here for a long time, it's so great great to have you with us. Um, I'm Pastor Hannah De Pasquale. Um, I have the honor of serving as pastor here at Peace. If we haven't had the pleasure of meeting, please do introduce yourself after worship, um, and I would love to get to know you, as well as our other folks would love to get to know you. We have coffee and snacks every Sunday after worship, so please do stick around if you are able. Um, I think I have one real quick announcement, and then we have several special announcements today. Um, And my only announcement is a great big thank you. Um, The baby shower last weekend was amazing, (laughs) and uh, Michael and I both just want to extend a huge, huge heart of gratitude, um, not only for the shower, but for all your support through this journey. Um, I'm doing well. I feel good. Baby's growing. Um, We're still unsure when baby will come, but hopefully we got a few more weeks with (laughs) y'all. I'm planning on at least two more weeks. Hopefully one or two more would be great. (laughs) Um, So please would love your prayers as we finish um, this leg of the journey and prepare to spend time with our new little one. And if you want more information about what happens when I'm gone, check out the newsletter. I wrote a little bit about that. Um, But you all will be covered and everything will be good. And I know that the spirit will continue to show up in this community even when I'm away. But again, we need a few more weeks together. (laughs) Um, So with that, I'm going to invite Kathy up uh, first for some announcements. Good morning. Um, Most of you are literate and can read. I would just point out that there uh, is a concerts coming up with Jeune's wonderful group, so uh, look at those dates. We will have a new members welcomed on the 19th as well as the congregational meeting. Uh, Everything else, just read through here. We always need volunteers. There's a Bible study resuming on Tuesday now that Susan is upright again. Thank you. I also want to um, mention that as the um, De Pasquales begin their child rearing, there will be a meal train. So watch for information about that, that we can contribute uh, some lunches and dinners for them when all they can do is hold the baby and take a nap. (laughs) We're celebrating with our uh, Eastern and Orthodox Greek uh, family. Uh, Today is their Easter. I do not understand how it gets that many weeks apart because it's with the moon, but today is their Easter. Last thing I would mention is that the hospitality um, and the ministry here at Peace is providing pizza for Teacher Appreciation Day this week at Conley School for their 97 teachers. And I want to thank Roadrunner Pizza, we're just keeping this right in the neighborhood, for making us a fabulous uh, tax-free deal. Um, I'm going to invite Betty up, and as she comes forward, uh, highlight a little bit what she's going to talk about. We are updating our directory. Um, Directory is a way for us to keep in touch which I think will be most important when I'm not here to kind of be a liaison through some folks. And so if you haven't checked out contact info on the table in the intro, please do that and update it. If you're not on the list, but you'd like to be that involved in the community that way, please add your information. Um, and new members, you'll get added in as well with the information that you gave me. But exciting, we're gonna add pictures. So, Betty. <laughs> yes, um, so we do have a photographer who is coming to take pictures. There are sign-up sheets near where all the information that you would update for the directory. We're go- going to do it on Wednesday, May 8th, this coming Wednesday, and next Sunday after church. So our photographer says he can probably take the pictures in 10 minutes or less, but we're going to give him 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So there are sign-up sheets for every 15 minutes starting at 10 o'clock on on Wednesday. Um, And if we need to add additional days, we will. If there's, for some reason, you can't sign up and you have a photo at home that you would like to contribute, we'll work on putting that in the, the directory too. And if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be around after church. Thank you, Betty. I'm working on that um, with Sandy. Uh, And then um, we have a special temple talk today. Susanna is going to come up and share more about a wonderful project that she's feeling led by the Spirit to share with us. So thanks, Susanna. Good morning. 
Morning. Um, I'm Susanna Odegaard. I know many of you know me as Ron and Diane's daughter, um, and also as one of the sopranos who usually sings in the choir. Um, but what I would like to talk to you about today is um, a youth after school program that I would like to start hosting here at um, Peace Lutheran Church. Um, Many of you may have read the article that I uh, put in the newsletter this week, or this month. Um, and so you may know that a few years ago I was spending time with my nieces and we went to the mall and um, Anna, who is a very insightful and thoughtful young woman, um, was looking around and she said, Auntie, the mall is the only place in town that kids my age can exist without paying anything. And I thought that was really sad. And as I thought about it, I realized, yeah, she's right. There aren't many places in Las Cruces where teenagers can exist um, without having to pay something to be there. Um, and so I would like to uh, create a uh, service ministry built from Peace Lutheran's heart for our community um, that we're all children, all youth, grades 6 through 12, um, so middle school and high school, regardless of church membership, faith, religion, ethnicity, uh, sexual orientation, or gender identity or expression, where they feel welcome, safe, and unpressured, and can spend their time productively at no cost to them or to their families. Um, my initial goals for that, my beginning goals, would be uh, just to start one to two days a week, um, nothing big, um, and provide things like uh, in indoor and table games, crafts, outdoor activities where we could utilize that great um, basketball court we have, uh, maybe some bean bags, snacks, possibly homework help. Um, as it grows, eventually I would uh, like to do four to five days a week. Um, and in addition to what we would start providing immediately, um, also have maybe a technology area, um, life skills classes, possibly led by people in our church, because I know many of you are very skilled um, individuals. Things like budgeting, writing a resume or a cover letter, um, simple cooking, possibly gardening. Um, and possibly counseling, um, if we had anybody who would be available to do that. Um, and also to have the youth as part of program leadership, making the decisions, um, helping with maintenance, and taking ownership of the program. Um, our next steps to working on this would be to gather a team of uh, four to five other individuals besides me um, who would be interested in helping to build this program um, from the ground up, uh, looking at um, looking at into other programs in the city uh, that are similar, not the same, but similar, such as Boys and Girls Club that we could uh, go to for assistance and advice in getting it started. Um, researching, I already said that, Boys and Girls Club, Jardín de los Niños, um, and beginning gathering resources uh, to implement our program. Um, and I do have several people that were wonderful enough to have already stopped and talked to me. Um, thank you, Lejeune. Thank you, Susan Mitchell. Um, they uh, have already offered some of their assistance. Um, so if you would like to, if you are interested in helping at all and being part of that team or you have other resources that you can offer, um, you can come talk to me at coffee hour after church. I'm always there, usually until the lights go off. Um, or you can contact me uh, at my email address, which is on the screen right now. I do apologize, there was a typo in the um, newsletter article. My email address in the article is wrong. Uh, I, I spelled my own email address wrong. Uh, and thank you, Susan, for pointing that out to me as well. She let me know that, that it was incorrect. Um, but it is Searsha9009, so S-A-O-I-R-S-E 9009 at gmail.com. Thank you so much, and I hope to hear from some of you soon about helping me out. Thank you, Susanna. It, it's, um, it's really wonderful to see someone feel a vision led by the could enhance this community, not only our church community, but the larger community. And you've been bold enough to bring it to our leadership and now bring it to us. And so I look forward to seeing what, what God does with, with this vision and this idea. And I do think it lines up with who we are as Peace Lutheran. We have a lot of experience with youth and children in the neighborhood. 
in the community. Um, and so this could be a, a great kickstart to see what God can do um, through us to serve the world. So thank you. Um, I forgot to mention that here at Peace Lutheran Church, we welcome all people to full participation in the life of the church, regardless of race or ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity, physical or mental disability, or any other identity that you have. Know that you are welcome to show up fully and as your full self, and to participate as fully as you feel comfortable and led here in worship. Um, that includes to Holy Communion, which we will celebrate today and every Sunday. And welcome to those who might be worshiping with us online. We are glad that you're here, and you are also invited to the Lord's table if you want to prepare elements at home so that you can participate. So know that you are welcome here, and you are welcome to participate however you feel led and comfortable. So as we begin worship, I invite you to rise in body or spirit and prepare your hearts for worship. <clears throat> Our call to worship, since I forgot that too, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. We gather at this font, O oh God, creator of oceans and rivers, rain and snow. We praise you for the Rio Grande River, Elephant Butte Reservoir, Messiah and Hornada aquifers, and all local sources of water, and for the water you provide us each day. Your steadfast love fills the earth. We praise your spirit hovering over this font and this community. We bless you for this cleansing water of rebirth, the flood of endless mercy, and for all the baptized around this blue planet. Your steadfast love fills the earth. All the waters are yours, O God, even stagnant rivers and wells nearly dry and lakes that are merely puddles. We beg you to heed the cries of everyone suffering from drought and destruction. As you saved Hagar and Ishmael in the desert, now save those, all those creatures dying of thirst. Pour down rain and fill up the wells that people may live. Your steadfast love fills the earth. We ask you, almighty provider, to give us the water we need, and we praise you for the sustenance you grant us at this font. By the water of our baptism, empower us to pour out ourselves for others and to safeguard the waters of your earth. Your steadfast love fills the earth. To you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, sea of holiness, spring of salvation, Cloud of mystery, be all praise and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises which exceed all we can desire through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Good morning. Our first reading is from the book of Acts in the 10th chapter. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of the Lord. Please join me in reading Psalm 98 responsively. Sing a new song to the Lord who has done marvelous things, whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. Lord, you have made known your victory. You have revealed your righteousness in the sight of the nations. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord, who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. This is the word of the Lord. Be at this time, I love any kids to come forward or anyone feeling young, of, young at heart that wants to hang out with us here up front. <laughs> Hello, good morning. <laughs> All right, we're going to start by making a circle. You think we can make a circle with the four of us? Can you make a circle with me? <laughs> I'm not gonna rub it on my head. No, <laughs> I'm not going to rub it on my head. All right, let's make a circle, okay? <laughs> Can you make a circle right here with me? All right. So we're going to play a game where we pass the balloon around the circle as fast as we can. All right? Hot potato? Like hot potato. Yes, exactly. Okay. Are you ready? Set. Go. As fast as you can. Okay, we're going to keep going. <laughs> One more time. Oh. <laughs> All right. What about, am I at the end? I'll take it. All right. So we did it with one. Do you think we can do it with two? All right. Here we go. You ready? You think we can do it with two? Yeah. Ready, set, go. Oh, come on. <laughs> this doesn't work unless we all help. Hot potato. <laughs> We're barely doing it with two. Okay, I don't know why I went behind my back. All right. <laughs> Stand on up. You gonna do it with us? All right, all right. Do you think we could do it with 10? Yeah. Okay, ready? Ready, set, go. One. <laughs> Ella. You're making this very difficult. <laughs> okay, wait. Did I say, how many did I say? Ten. Oh, no. I only brought two balloons. I guess I ran out. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Well, it's okay. Let's sit down and talk about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I ran out of balloons, even though I said we we're going to do ten balloons. Um, and, but it's making me think about the story today. So today we're going to talk about God's love as shown through Jesus. So Jesus is talking to his disciples. Do you remember who the disciples are? Miguel? His people, yeah, his friends, his followers, his people. And he's talking to them about what to do after he's not with them anymore. And he tells them to love one another. He says, love one another in the same way that God has loved me. And then the, he tells them to go out and love each other as he has loved them. So he says, God first loved me, Jesus, and now I'm giving that love to you to go share with the rest of the world. But that's a lot of love to go around, isn't it? And I think it's love, even though we are invited to share that love with other people, sometimes we, like the balloons, we can run out of love. 
right? Or we don't always feel like sharing the love. Or we're not always good at sharing God's love, and sometimes it might run out. However, with God, the love never runs out. And Jesus is reminding them of this, right? As long as you stay connected to me through loving me and loving God, the love that you're sharing with other people will never run out. There will be endless love, endless balloons of love, (laughs) as long as you stay connected with me. Because we're not always really good at being kind to other people, are we? We're not always very good at loving other people, even though we know that we should. Um, But if we stay connected to God, that'll help us share that love with other people, that endless love that never ends. Um, We can find our strength in God to do that. How's that sound? Good? All right, shall we pray? Yes, we're going to (laughs) pray. Would you repeat after me? Dear God, thank you for Jesus who showed us your love and tells us to share it with others. Help us to do just that. Amen. All right, I'm going to keep the balloons up here because there's not enough for everybody. (laughs) And as you give me the balloons, we all rise in body or spirit to sing and receive the gospel. (laughs) Thank you. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. And let us pray. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations, from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. Speak to us now as you have spoken to us throughout the ages. Amen. So I don't think it's in our hymnal, but do you all know the song, They Will Know We Are Christians by Our Love? (laughs) Yeah. Do you like the message? Have you thought about it? What could that mean, to be known by our love? Here, Jesus gets into the whole love business again, as he's affirming the love coming from God, being shared through him, and then sent out through the disciples. He affirms that love is the fruit of following him. Again, we are jumping back before Easter, the actual events of Easter, where Jesus is spending his final moments with his disciples, his followers, his friends. He's preparing them for his departure, and he doesn't say, as he's preparing them, he doesn't say, okay, now here's a list of things you got to do. Here are all the people you need to avoid when I'm gone. Here's the next place you have to go. Instead, he simply says, abide in my love and love one another. Seems simple, right? (laughs) But yet love, although it might be the simplest thing that we think about that we are called to do, it's one of the hardest things to do. We say this all the time, right? God is love. We love one another. Jesus loves you. But we know that that love without action 
Just preaching love without living it out is not the type of fruit that will last, like Jesus is talking about, right? They will know we are Christians. They will know that we love Christ and are striving to follow him by our love. And yet, what does that even mean? I've led a few groups and classes during my ministry where I've asked people, what does it mean to be a Christian? What does it mean to be a Christian? And so often the responses are about being a good person, going to church, having a prayer life, showing up for other people. Sometimes they mention helping the poor. <laughs> and a couple of times, the first answer out of anyone's mouth has been, to be a Christian means you follow the Ten Commandments. <laughs> now, the Ten Commandments are great to live by, and we take them seriously, but we know that they don't capture everything. And Jesus gave us commentary and his own interpretation about these commandments. The Ten Commandments were given in a very different time and context where things like not coveting your neighbor's house or, or slaves was how you showed love and commitment to your neighbor and to God. But several times, Jesus says the greatest commandment is love. And here he's talking about it over and over again with his disciples. He says, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love what is it, and to love one another. And what is it to keep this commandment to love? We also hear Jesus say this kind of funny phrase. It's just, it's just translated kind of funny. You are my friends if you do what I command you. <laughs> if you do this, you are my friends. If you do what I command you. Doesn't feel super right, right? <laughs> but this if is not so much conditional, I don't think. He says, you are my friends. It's more like consequential. Like, this is how they will know you are my friends, if you follow my commandments, if you live them out. You are my beloveds, you are of me, if you do this commandment of love, if you show it to other people. It's not a threat that this is the only way to be a friend of Jesus, <laughs> but he's talking again about the fruit that the disciples will bear if they actually live out this love that Jesus is telling them about. So often, I think people think, and I think we often fall into this trap of thinking that following Christ is about somehow checking things off or getting things right. That if we just pray enough or show up to church enough, God will be happy with me. But God is not some sort of scorekeeper, keeping track and marking off good deeds and making sure you've come to church enough times or done enough to get into heaven. <laughs> That's not what God's love looks like. Instead, God's love is an abiding connection of love. I chose you, Jesus says, and there's nothing you can do to change that. Jesus also shares why he's saying these things. He says, I share these things so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. The goal is joy. It's not to make us feel bad. It's not to make us feel judged. The goal is joy. The goal is not making sure we hit the mark or pass the test. The goal is joy. This love and this joy that Jesus talks about, it's always within us, always accessible to us through God's abiding presence. This love and this joy is what God in Christ was all about. It's what Christ revealed through his life, death, and resurrection. Love is the basis of our relationship with God and with one another, and joy is the result. So we do not love one another out of obligation, or to somehow get on God's good side, this commandment to love is an invitation, as I talked about on Maundy Thursday when we read this before. And as one commentator put it, this love is not about subordinance, but about opportunity and invitation. And again, the result is joy, joy that comes from connection, not obligation. I love that in this discourse, this conversation with his disciples, Jesus doesn't just tell them what to do. He tells them and reminds them who they are. You are my friends. You are the beloved community loved by me and loved by God. You are created for love. And this has been revealed through me, through our community, and will continue to be revealed through the Holy Spirit. So lean into that love, he invites them. 
But even if you don't, I'm still here for you. You are loved so deeply that it's who you are. And no matter how you behave or respond, that love is still here for you. It's an inherent divine love that fills and connects all of us. I really appreciate how Father Richard, Father Richard Rohr speaks of this love. He wrote in a blog post and he talks about it like this. Love is not something you can bargain for, nor is it something you can attain or work up to, because love is your very structural and essential identity created in the image of the Trinity. When you are living in conscious connection with this loving inner presence, you are in your true self, he writes. He calls this invitation to lean into love a conscious connection. We aren't required to do anything to make God love us, but we are invited to be consciously connected to that love that is, in, that is within each and all of us, remembering that love, sharing it with others, and living it out through our lives. Roar continues, God is forever united to this love within you. It is your soul, the part of you that always says yes to God. End quote. This love is your soul, the part of you that always says yes to God. God always says yes to us, regardless of what we do. God's love doesn't depend on us saying yes to God, and yet we are invited to say yes and to be consciously connected to that love, allowing it to pour out into our lives. And again, the result is joy. But I also know and I recognize that love and joy, as much as we can talk about it, can be really difficult to embrace, especially in the midst of times of grief or depression or confusion. So when I talk about this love and joy, I'm not talking about some superficial happy face you put on just to make people think that you're happy. I'm not talking about not being real about where you're at or how you're feeling. But if you've been in the throes of grief or depression, then you also probably know how much what might seem like a little simple interaction or connection can remind you of that love, can remind you that you are loved. When you muster up the courage to say yes to that coffee invite or to respond to that text or get out of bed today or out of the house today or maybe get to church today, when you muster up the courage in those darkest times those moments of being able to take a step of connection remind us that joy does still exist, even in times when joy seems hard or rare to find. This love and joy lasts beyond and within whatever emotions we show up with. The love as revealed in Jesus Christ is a love that lasts within and beyond the darkest times of our lives. It is not a love that requires us to be happy or okay all the time. But we are invited to lean into love, to seek out the joy, to share it even when it's difficult. But even if you don't make it out of bed or out of the house some days, even if you don't always make it to church, know that Jesus' love is still for you. God still sees you as beloved. We don't do these things, come to church out of obligation, as if only those who are Christians in this type of way are the ones that get God's love. <laughs> Instead, we come here to be strengthened and nourished, to find joy in community and connection in the presence of each other. God's joy and love, as made complete in Christ, is always available to us. God's joy, the joy of eternal life, everlasting connection, endless grace, is a joy that we cannot change. And God's love, God's selfless love, based in mercy, is a love we cannot lose. But for us, responding to God's love and joy with our lives, living them out, that's the part that takes some work, some intentionality. We, we have to be intentional and love when we love all people and choose joy in the midst of the challenges of our lives and in the midst of a world that's deeply suffering. But this love and this joy, based in the divine, eternal God, this love and joy already exists within us, 
We are invited to be consciously connected to them, lean into them, and to share them in ways that will bear fruit that will last. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. confess our faith together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your Holy Spirit falls upon all who hear the word. Fill your church with the gifts of your spirit and give understanding hearts to those who strengthen our commitments with our ecumenical and irreligious partners. God of grace, you speak and the face of the earth is renewed. Revive your creation, that habitats and every kind of living thing might flourish. Protect endangered species and help us to care for all your creatures. God of grace. Your world is divided and the nations rage. Grant wisdom and vision to the world leaders, especially those in Israel and Palestine. Bring peace to the people in Gaza, that they may seek justice, peace, and the good of all. Strengthen international partnerships and cooperation. God of grace. Your children are in need. Comfort all those who suffer especially those afflicted by anxiety, depression, and mental illness. Help us to be conduits of your love and our care for one another. We pray especially for healing for David, Val, Tanya, and Rhonda, and for guidance for Joey. God of grace. We rejoice and celebrate those having birthdays this week. Christine Little, Tyler Stockberger, God of Grace. Your work is done in this place with our hands. Bless the ministries of this congregation that we may embody your love for the world. Inspire those who plan and lead worship our pastor, Hannah, council members, committee members, and volunteers. Bless the work of our Rocky Mountain Synod and churchwide. Continue to strengthen and bless our outgoing bishop, Jim Gonia, and give renewed strength to and wisdom to our new bishop, Megan, as she prepares to make this transition. Your blessed saints now rest in you. Give us thankful hearts for those who have gone before us, especially Julian of Norwich, renewer of the church, Victor the Moor, martyr, Nicholas Ludwig von Zinzendorf, renewer of the church, hymn writer, and the saints of peace, Gustav Karl, Grace, Hazel, Don and Gordon, God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share that peace with one another. Peace be with you. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
As we find our seats at this time, we offer our gifts to God through our tithes and offering, and we enjoy this offering from our choir. to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene, with Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs>
in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now we join our hearts and voices and pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Here at Peace Lutheran, we celebrate communion for all who desire to come forward here at the rail. When you come forward, um, take an empty cup from the trays, bring it with you to the rail where you can kneel or stand or do whatever is most comfortable. Um, here you will receive bread or a gluten-free wafer. If you need gluten-free, just let me know. And we have both wine and grape juice. Just let our servers know if you prefer the wine or the grape juice. If you'd like to come forward but not receive the elements, if you cross your arms like this, I would be happy to give you a blessing instead. As you return to your seats, take the empty cups and put them in the baskets as you go. If it's most comfortable for you to stay put where you are, um, but you'd like communion, we will bring it to you at the end. Just make sure that we are aware of you wanting that. Um, if you are communing online or in your pews, I invite you to do that now. The body of Christ given for you. has no conditions. There is no requirement to come to this table except the desire to receive the grace and love that Jesus pours out here. So if you desire that grace and love, please do come and join us at this meal. <laughs>
Please rise and body your spirits. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Shepherding God, you are able for us and nourish us with your love. Send us forth from this land to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Rejoice and be glad.